Well, this episode really did feel like a catch up on if you haven't been following Kiki, you kind of you were able to catch up on what it is that she's actually been doing. So that was good. A lot of interesting stuff got covered. Show did. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Kiki's World. This is season one, episode two. And like I said, this episode felt a lot like a, a, a quick catch up on some things, some questions I had floating around. She actually talked about some good stuff, some good stuff. She actually talked about bullying. You know, bullying when it comes to your kids, bullying doesn't always happen outside the home. Sometimes bullying is happening right inside the home and in the African-American household, it doesn't get seen as bullying a lot of times and therefore does not get addressed. So they actually kind of talked about that. Um, also, we found what happened to Michael. Now, this was the thing because, you know, love Kiki dearly, but I followed the music. Um, I, I saw when well, she had her other show, she was doing her show on YouTube. Again, I followed the music. I knew the show was there. I'd give her a click and a view here and there, but I followed the music. So I, I always kind of wonder what happened to Michael. And we found out some stuff about Michael. And I was really shocked. I was really shocked. But in this episode, we got to see a lot more about Zachariah, um, which is her now, her current husband. And I think I like Zachariah. I think I like Zachariah. I was like, what is he doing? Is he like another Mr. Mom like Michael was? Or or what 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 does he do really? He's Mr. Mom for sure. Um, but he got it going on. Zachariah, when he speaks, people listen. People listen. And he's not, because when you look at him and his stature, you just kind of like, okay, you know, he's big, big and brawn. And and yeah, okay, she went and got her old big old thick old country uh man. But uh uh he cried, looked like just as quick and just as easy as her. But he's about his business. So I like I like Zachariah. I like what I saw. I like what I saw. But um, so let's just start right there. So when we left off, her and Andre were having their little time. Zachariah was coming down the steps. He told her, shut up. Shut up. Because she was doing the Kiki. She wasn't listening. She just fussing. Now, one thing about Kiki, she loved kids. Mm -hmm. Kiki kind of self-centered, though. Kiki is a bit self-centered. Um, in the midst of all, she's a diva. She, she's R&B diva. And she... Kiki got a lot. Kiki, it requires a lot of attention. And that's where the, the issues are. Her whole thing, she was fussing with Andre because she basically owed him an apology and didn't want to give it. You know, she got mad at him and literally wasn't calling him and wouldn't respond to him. And they hadn't talked in 25 days. She wouldn't pick up his calls. She wouldn't call him back. She was mad about whatever. And the whatever is, he wasn't paying her as much attention as she thought she should get. She's a diva. And she's even that when it comes to her children. And all that, that all that crying and all that shit, that's all by design. That's all what makes Kiki, Kiki. She's silly. And again, she requires a lot of attention. But Zachariah, at least, or he literally put a pen in that argument. Told her, shut up. She's like, don't be telling me to shut up. Well, shut up. Shut up. He told her and Andre the devil knows what the love level is between you all in that friendship. And that's why y'all are being attacked and y'all falling for debate. Like, just shut up. Just shut up and listen to each other and knock it off. Knock it off. But he and it they got to it. They literally got to it. Zachariah, like I said, put a pen in that whole thing. And he literally. Andre literally had to drag an apology out of Kiki. Now that, you know, I'm not one for the apologies. It just kind of is what it is. If you do something to me and I decide that I'm going to move forward with you, I don't need that whole formal apology because what do it mean? What do it mean? See, I, I always run, I run in an issue about forgiveness because 
most times it's just a bunch of bullshit. Because generally, when someone does something that violates you personally, now I'm not talking about little, you know, little stupid stuff that friends go through. But when someone does something that violates you personally, uses you, uh, really discredits you, um, breaks your trust. You could do as much forgiveness as you want. It generally don't work out for the long term. That's just what I've seen. It's the, the time I've been on the planet. So I'm not real quick to forgive. But if I do, I don't need all this pomp and circumstance and all this extra shit. And, and we got to sit down and we got to. Because first of all, especially if it's like a. Well, people see that with me, like online. That's, you know, those are different types of friendships. But if we get to going back and forth, please don't ever expect. Don't ever expect for me to take back the things I said about you because I ain't, because I'm not. If I cuss you out, and that's in my real life too, you know, if I cuss you out, you just got cussed out. I ain't saying nothing that I didn't mean. I ain't making up nothing. If I call you a low down, dirty bitch, then that's what I mean. And three days after I ain't mad no more and you ain't mad no more, no, I'm not going to come back and tell you, you know, I really didn't mean to call you a low down dirty, but I did. I did. I did. And in that moment, you were a low down dirty bitch. And if we have to go back to that, and that's mentioned again, you know, in that situation, you was a low down dirty bitch, right? It, uh, I ain't taking it back, and I expect the same of you. I don't expect you to come back and tell me you apologize for it. And then whenever mad day comes again or you step out of line again, then I'm too low down dirty bitch. No, no, I ain't got time for that. So that's where I struggle with that. But like I said, I don't need all that long drawn out apology. I just need to hear you say you're sorry. Ciao, bye. Keep all that. I'll make my decision whether I'm going to move forward with you or not. And then that's it. And I don't require that either. I don't require that dumb apology. Keep it. Keep it. Because I got my eye on you. And promise you, the friendship never will be the same. So I will always have my eye on you. When I first become friends with you, I watch. Of course, I watch and I protect my feelings. But I don't keep an eye on you like I do when I know you ain't about shit. Or I know you have a tendency to do shit that don't work out with the way I do things. I'll keep my eye on you. So I don't need all that. But anyway, she had actually even mentioned how she had cussed him out in the past. And she had said she wouldn't do that no more. So I'm all right. I'm sitting there looking like um, I'm living for you all in this friendship you had you all are having. I promise you, me and Kiki probably wouldn't have that friendship. You you promise not to cuss him out like that no more. Right. You wouldn't because you wouldn't even be, I wouldn't be available for you to cuss me out like that again. And if you did, oh boy, what a time we would have. Anyway, okay. And here's this other thing. Now I'm about sick of y'all in this fart. That is so nasty. That is so nasty. All farting in the kitchen and farting on each other. I don't know where, where that comes from, where people think that's for, as a kid, or I don't think none of that is funny. That's literally coming out of your ass. Nothing coming out of your ass. Gases, liquids, none of that. I don't want nothing of yours getting on me and my clothing or all up in my space. Get out of here. That is so nasty. Oh my God. And they just, they said, I was like, oh, and then they think, like, they think it's funny. And it's all in the show, all this farting stuff. I'm like, that's nasty. And every time they do it, my stomach turn. I'm like, oh, anyway, nasty. Anyway, so they're all sitting, having a little family meeting or whatever. And you got Kimar over there. Kimar is her 12-year-old. He ain't paying no attention. This is where he talks about the bully and stuff. Mimi hurt Kimar's feelings. Because once they got his attention, because he literally was paying them all dust. So I take it he's kind of to himself. He's playing his video game, listening to his music or whatever, and ignoring them. I mean, you got, I'm sure you have to. There's a ton of, what is there, 13, 14 people in that house? Child, you better tune them out or you'll be stone cold local. But anyway, she called him Big, Big Booty George. 
he's his stature is he's thick and tall. He's twelve, but he looked like damn near like a grown man. But he's big, you know. He's a he's a big boy, and um, obviously there's some. He's a little self conscious about that, and. Mimi said some stuff and he kind of walked off and it hurt his feelings. And they're like, go on down there, you know, um, you know, because Kiki was, you know, right, chuckling, chuck, 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 with the kid, you know, no big deal. And they're like, you know, he'll cry and this, that thing, and the other. Okay, so this is where the issue is. Kiki goes down and she talks to him. Now, I was digging what she was saying at first. You know, she was saying, you know, I forget sometimes. Like, I really do. They had her confessional running. She said, I forget sometimes. He is a baby. And he's tw he is. He's 12. He's a baby. Literally. You know, 12 years old. That's a baby. And she's like, and I forget, you know. And I kn she knows that he's not that person. And she spoke that she knows all her kids are different. And this, that, and this, the other thing. And they are. People, period. Everybody is not equipped for that old shucking and jiving and reading and roasting bullshit. Everybody ain't cut out for that. There are people who can take it. And there are people who cannot. And the people who cannot, and I see, I can't speak to a Caucasian home because I ain't never lived in one. But in an African-American home, if you don't have tough skin, you kind of just get rolled over. You're seen as weak. And you're always a target. If somebody feels like it, they will drag you. And, you know, it happens. And I promise you, there are Black people who actually deal with the bullying and stuff, just like you see white kids that deal with the bullying and stuff. Um, do our stuff get televised like theirs all the time? No. And I'm being real with y'all. No. And it, But it happens. Black kids commit Harry Carry too. It happens. There are kids that they end up committing sideways because they, they just can't handle the pressure. But our stuff don't get televised like that. One, we ain't so quick to even want to share that. See, that's that's a thing about how the the as much as we are alike, we are just that much different. Black folks ain't quick to share nothing about suicide. We ain't quick to share nothing about gay. We ain't quick to go against what the church say. We, mm -mm, mm -mm. So a lot of times our stuff stays hidden. You know, we, a lot of us, you go back, I'm 51. When I grew up, you go back, when I grew up in behind the, the generation behind me, what happens in this house, stay in this house. Things are starting to change, but that's why a lot of, you know, molestation and and, and all kind of sideways shit. And so it happens. All of it happens within the Black family as well. But we just ain't out here running it. We ain't out here running it, and they don't make it all up on the news. Because, you know, it's in a lot of circles. Don't nobody care. That's y'all's problem. But we ain't the ones that's quick to share it. But we deal with the same old stuff. So this was good. This was good. I seen this. And I, basically, he's one of those kids that is not equipped for that, that shucking and jiving and all that bullying. And it is bullying. It's bullying. When it's not wa warranted and it's not welcome, it is bullying. When you know that it was a person, when the whole family sat back, where he walked out and they all knew what part they all played, that's bullying. That's bullying. And I'm just glad that they're aware. And later in the program, we seen, you know, he sat with Kiki, but then Kiki did the Kiki thing, in my opinion. Some folks ain't gonna like it, but I'm gonna say it. Kiki did the Kiki thing. Kiki took his pain and made it about her. And then she's over there trying to cry and carry on. So he had no where to release his shit. Because now he jumped right over to protect. Because they're trained to protect her. They're trained to protect her, which they're boys. They should. You know, boys, and it's a lot of it's innate. You protect your mother. So when she turned on her flood, you know, and again, by design, that's Kiki, I require the attention. So she just took it. Then it became about her. 
and now how she's so hurt. She was so hurt because he viewed her as a part of the problem because it wasn't mommy. And then the kids are doing this to me. It's like everybody's doing it. And mommy was a part of it. Actually, mommy kicked it off. And that that made her cry. So that was that. But anyway, he did end up, you know, she talked to Zachariah. Zachariah was like, okay, I got it. And he sat down and he talked to him. And they had a talk. And he basically put, you know, told him why I'm here, what I expect, what I'm trying to accomplish. You know, if it's bothering you, I'm going to make it stop. Period. And that's how we end up rolling into the stuff about Michael. And Michael is Kimar's biological father. And I, I was so shocked because when Michael was in the picture and she was on R&B Divas, one of our things was that, God, Michael is always up underneath her. Like, go away. He is always up underneath her. So from going to, from that to this, I couldn't even imagine how we got here that he's not hands on with the kids. He was with these kids forever. And now he just kind of, I said, what the heck happened that he kind of just don't mess with y'all? Like he don't mess with them at all. And and in her confessional, she asked, she did, this was good too. She asked Kimar, is it okay if I speak about your relationship with your dad? You know, and he, he basically spoke of himself. He's like, he don't come around. He don't do nothing. He's not present. He just gives us stuff and keeps it moving. And no one could have made me believe that, that Michael, as much as my, as how he played Mr. Mom, and as much as he was stuck up underneath Kiki, that something went down that he literally just kind of don't mess with her at all. Because I was shocked when he wasn't a husband no more. I was like, what? So that was very interesting. I answered some questions. I was like, okay. But as a whole in the family, they've pinpointed that there is a problem that Kimar is definitely not cut out for all the shucking and the jabbing. He's not built like that and that it needs to stop. It needs to stop. And nobody really gave, and that's the good thing is that we didn't see anybody giving any pushback, you know, and playing the, oh, well, whatever. Nobody did that because that's what happens a lot in the black home. That, oh, whatever, oh, you know, toughen up, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then you get those other results that nobody wants to talk about. Or you get a child that start beating everybody's ass. Why he fight all the time? He must be starting it. He got a chip on his shoulder. No, you was doing the doing the most and got your ass whooped. That's all. But yeah, so, you know, it is what it is. Life is life. Life is life. Um, being black ain't changed since I got in it. <laughs> it has. It. it literally has. And I mean, we're more, I don't know, for some reason, we're starting to be more out there with telling our stuff. But child, being black is a very interesting very interesting dynamic. And I mean, but you know, for the world, you actually do need tough skin. You do. You need tough skin. But, you know, your home is supposed to be a safe place. Like when everything in your world is a goddamn mess, you're supposed to be able to come home and you are, there's got to be somewhere where you're able to let your guard down. And at home is supposed to be that. And when it's not, it actually does cause a problem and you do struggle a bit. And, you know, sometimes you got to shake up the foundation. It just kind of is what it is. You have to have a space that you can let your hair down. There has to, it, the, being a person doesn't work unless there's a space where you can actually let your hair down. And sometimes you got to be the ass or Tammy to make for that space. Go on and whoop ass. <laughs> that is my advice. Going on and whoop ass, honey. Moving right along. We've seen um, Kiki go to a rehearsal. She's going to do the City Winery, which we just got one here in Pittsburgh. And I love it. Love it. City Winery does bring in a lot of African-American acts. And I love it. And I'm so appreciative. We just got ours this year. And listen, we've been getting a lot of entertainers that we normally would not see and I am so here for it. But she was doing the Atlanta City Winery. She was struggling, 
through this rehearsal. You know, her voice is just beautiful anyway, but she was like hoarse and she was having all these issues with her voice. But it, it made sense. I mean, come on. What she got going on with the baby and all of that. She it's a lot of fatigue, it's a lot of stress. That she is going on so no shock to me that she would you would see some of the results in her voice and i can imagine that she never gets the sleep even being the spoiled diva that she is i can imagine that she never gets the actual sleep that is required especially to do what she does you know because she's it's all muscle at what she's using those are muscles all that singing she don't i'm sure she doesn't keep up the rest that she should to actually carry that the way she does truly gifted from god to be able to do what kiki does and be who she is um her daughter kitara is actually doing the styling for her and you hear them talking when it's top they talk about the music and then it comes up again in the close about staying young and staying youthful i'm like but she's not young and she's not youthful and i'm i laugh every time the kids the kids it's like you need to do some ass shaking popping music so because these old people you singing to they dying they falling off like flat excuse me ma'am no we're not no, we are not. <laughs> we are not. And your mama is not a booty popping, ass shaking artist. Your mama needs to sing what it is she sang. She starts singing booty popping and ass shaking. Y'all going to be looking for some jobs because that's not the child. She's not no young girl. She's not no young girl. But we got this hair thing. And I'm like, yeah, Kiki, this hair. Um, I, it's good for your off time, you know, but I'm like, yeah, there's a whole list of shit you ain't gonna be able to wear with that hair, you know, so I was laughing at her trying to figure out looks to go along and ride in with that hair. I was like, oh, you got your, your work cut out, Ellie. So um, interesting. Anyway, so we get there to City Winery um, doing everything. And there's this guy, Johnny Cabell. And Johnny is uh, Kissy's manager now there's a past where he done did some old sideways shit to kissy which they didn't go into no details about it i'm thinking it must be about some money okay and kiki is mad see this is one of them things where you have a relationship in any kind of relationship you don't take your relationship to your family until you know you are completely done because your family don't forgive and you be done moved on and you be kissing that again and your family still want to ring his neck and this is what's going on with johnny and kiki she just got all like i said diva she it derailed everything she got going on because he was backstage i'm like kiki if you don't pull it together and knock it off but they had to do a whole special prayer about him being there i was like oh stop stop but um yeah kissy was opening up for kiki i was like girl it, I was like, all right, girl, I'm glad we're getting to see you. Because I was like, damn, y'all. And that, But that's how it is, being an open and act and, and trying to get known. It don't always pop right off. She's popular doing what she does behind the scenes. But the people were just kind of looking like, girl, I do not know this song, child. Okay, honey, whatever, girl. But she looked good. She sound good. I'm like, it'll, it, it'll come. But I'm like, oh, that's, that's, that's rough. You know, the, the beginnings, the grind is rough. I was like, damn. So that was that. But whatever that is that's going on with her and Johnny, there's there was trust issues. Kiki's still pissed off. I think we're going to see some more about it going forward because um, she was really mad. But he's managing her. That's why. But she said, why is he here? He's managing her. And that's why he was there. She was opening the show. He needed to be here. It was his job. Then we went into this whole thing about the album. And she thought it was eight songs, but it's actually 10 songs. And she's just having a fit. She fussed about these other two songs. Girl, if you're going to shut up and sing two more songs, Kiki, knock it off. And more farting. I said, oh, Jesus. There they go, just fart the shit again. Just ridiculous. Just got on my nerves with that farting stuff. Then we actually had to part at the end. I was like, oh, my God. It was too much and too heavy. I'm like, I don't watch the whole show. And I'm laughing at Kihi and, and I'm taking in stuff about the bullying. And I'm like loving all that. Then I'm loving on Zachariah. And then here we go. The baby gets sick. He actually he has some sleep apnea. So he was actually struggling a little bit while they were at the um, 
the city winery, she's like, wake up, 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 you know, and she's like, breathe up, up, you know, and whatever. And then he had a cough and fit and he stopped breathing for 13 minutes. And we had to go back through that and we had to see the um, ambulances and all of this pull up. And I was just a mess. I was just done. I was like, Kiki, key, key. I was done. I'm like, why do I have to end the show on this note? It was so sad. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, just broke my little heart. And, you know, she then, you know, she she got they got them together and everything. But it just, then we got Kiki, she's blaming herself, you know, and then through all, like I've been fussed about her earlier in this episode and her being a diva and all that, being self-centered. But then the real Kiki actually shows up, you know, and then I'm like, all right, Kiki, you know, you want to take it hunger because she's sitting there, she's blaming herself and saying how the specialists, whenever she was pregnant, basically wanted her to abort. And she said, and the specialists said abort and God said no. God spoke to her and told her, no, this is what's supposed to go on. This is how it's going to be. You're going to do it and you're going to take care of it, whatever it is and however it comes and however I decide to finish it off, you're going to do it. So that's it. Girl, ain't and blame yourself, nothing. It is what it is. And she said, you know, she, and she feels so guilty watching him go through the struggle because she made the decision to bring him here. You really didn't. You really didn't. You 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 followed the direction. You didn't make the decision. You followed the direction. The tap on the shoulder was the decision, sweetheart. You paid attention to the message. You got nothing to feel bad about, Kiki. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know it because you said it yourself. The specialist said abort. God said no. End the story. And on that, I'm up out of here. But yeah, they broke my heart at the end, baby. But baby, okay. He all right. But yeah, she went through some stuff at the end of there. And um, yeah, I, I know I was over there crying and carrying on. So I can just imagine how, you know, the family was. Oh, just terrible. But anyway, like I said, that's it. God said now. It is what it is in the story.